Hello, here is our primer on Euclidean geometry. Um, a few helpful facts. So one is that if you have a pair of parallel lines cut by a transversal, right? So we have two lines. And those lines are cut by a transversal. Um, those form just two angle measures. And here is easiest to just sort of mark which ones are um, the same. So I'm going to mark angles in red and angles in green. Um, so there are what they call the alternate interior angles are equal. Um, or equal measure, right? Congruent angles. Um, those are equal then to the angles opposite of them. Um, and they're also, you also have these out here, which in this diagram are the larger angles, right? These are also alternate interior, alternate sides of the transversal, interior to the parallel lines. That's why they say alternate interior, right? Um, and then those again are equal to the opposite, um, equal measure to the opposite angles, right? So um, the all the angles that I marked red have the same measure. All the angles that I marked green have the same measure. So this is one um, one very useful fact in in Euclidean geometry. Um, in particular, it's going to come up a lot in the Huygens curvature primary source project. Um, now there's another one, and this I think is maybe a little trickier. Um, this you know this first one you can. I think um, you know vi visually it's it's not too bad to um, for it to sit sit well with with you, um, but there's a, there's a trickier one um, that's based on um, a particular construction. So the second one is that a right triangle will always be cut into to smaller, similar triangles when you cut it by an altitude. Right. So here there are quite a few technical terms from geometry. So I want to um, draw this. And I also want to say it again in a little bit less wordy of a uh, of language and say it a little more mathematically. So here's the right triangle and I'm gonna call it A, B, C, right? And then what I'm gonna draw is, I'm gonna draw an altitude. So the altitude in the triangle an altitude is a perpendicular, right? And here we're doing an altitude on the hypotenuse of the right triangle. And so this is perpendicular to the right, to the to the opposite side. Um, so there's our, our altitude, right? And the um, let's mark let's give a name to this point. Let's call it D, the point of intersection of the altitude and the hypotenuse of the original triangle. So what we're saying here is, what do we mean when we say similar triangles? Well, when we say similar triangles, let's look at this term briefly, right? This means that the triangles have all, they might be different size, but they have all angles are equal, right? That's the definition of similar triangles. So two triangles are similar if and only if all three angles are, are equal. Um, you can have one that's tiny and one is giant, but they have the same proportions. Right? Um, and here is um, the more precise version of this statement. Right? So I want to say that triangle A, B, C, so that is triangle ABC is similar to, which we write with a, it's not equal, but um, the wavy equals, 
right, is trying is similar to both of the two smaller triangles. Right? So it's going to be similar to here, the way I have it drawn in this diagram, the second smallest triangle, right, would be uh, instead of ABC, would be A, C, D. Right? And then the third triangle would be triangle um, C, B, D. So those three triangles are all similar. And why is this the case? Let's let's look briefly at why is this the case. Well, this this follows from the fact that the sum of all angles in a triangle, the sum of the three angles, is always 180 degrees. Um, it follows pre pretty quickly from that. So if you look at this, look at the angle here, angle A, right? So if you look at angle at the angles of triangle ABC, it has 90 degrees at C, right? And it has 90. however many degrees at angle A, right? Um, it doesn't really matter, but let's call that alpha for the measure of angle A. Right. So then you could say, what is the measure of angle B? Well, it's going to be 180 minus 90 minus alpha, right? Because that's, which, which is also 90 minus alpha, right? Because that's all that's left out of the 180 degrees. We've subtracted off the other two angles in triangle ABC, right? Similarly, what else can we say? We can say that triangle ACD has what? It has 90 degrees at D, right? And alpha degrees at A. Right. So, what is the measure of angle ACD? Well, it's also 180 minus 90 minus alpha. Better known as 90 minus alpha. Right. Meaning, what did, what did we just learn? Well, we just learned that angle B actually has the same measure as angle ACD. This is something that's maybe not quite apparent just from the, the picture, right? This is one where I think the calculation really, really helps. So angle B, we just figured out, is equal to angle ACD. Right. Now, a very similar argument, yeah, similar argument, um, produces also that angle DCB right? has the same measure as angle A. Right angle DCB also has the same measure as angle A. So what does that mean? It means we have these three angles, the right angle, the green angle and the blue angle. And if you look, each of the three triangles in the picture has exactly one of those each, right? Each of these three triangles. The biggest triangle, ABC, right? The second biggest triangle, um, ACD, and the third biggest triangle, CBD, they all have exactly one green angle, one blue double take angle, and one right angle. So the angles are the same in all three of those triangles. So all three of those triangles are perfectly proportional to each other. Right, they're all similar. So that's our conclusion here. That's why this theorem is true, right? So this, this is a nice little fact right here. This theorem is a nice fact that Huygens used a lot in the development of curvature um, regarding the um, similarity of right triangles. Right? So this, this is a really useful construction. 
Um, as a warning, Huey Higgins will not tell you when he's using this result, he'll just use it and it's on you to, ah, that's why, that's why. Um, so just to, again, to recap, right? Thus each, what, what are we saying there? We're saying that each of triangle, each of the three triangles has uh, angles of what? Measuring 90 alpha and 90 minus alpha, right? Those are the three angles that we have here. <clears throat> so they're, right, they're, therefore they're all similar. Um, and so then here's a, an example then based on this, right? Just to show how you could use this, um, the, the similarity, um, right? Th this is a consequence of similarity, right? Is that corresponding pairs of sides in similar triangles have equal ratios. Right, meaning if you have one triangle say ABC that's similar to another triangle. Let's say this one is bigger. Right. But let's say these have the same angles. So they're similar. Right. So we have two triangles similar to each other. What can you conclude from that? Well, the idea is whatever scaling factor you have to multiply AB up by to get BE, well, you could express that as the ratio of the length DE to AB, right? That would be the, that's how you could calculate the scaling factor from AB to DE. Well, that ratio has to be the same as the scaling factor from um, BC, DEF, which also has to be the same as the scaling factor from AC to DF, right? All of those have to be equal to each other, right? So that's that's a way that you can um, leverage the knowledge about angles and triangles, similarity, um, to get a conclusion about side lengths and in particular ratios, ratios about side lengths, right? So, um, so just to do a little example, sort of combining this property two um, with this ratio sort of sort of calculation. Um, for example, let's say we had let's say we're given a right triangle, right and in that right triangle, there's an altitude, right? So same same diagram as before. Um, and let's say we're given the measures of a few sides. So let's say we're given um, measure uh, one on AC, right? And let's say we're given measure two on AB, right? Um, and then given this, AB is two, there we go, AC equals one, 
right? Given that, given those two side lengths. Um, and let's say, uh, or yeah, so given this, right? Let's find the altitude. altitude. of our triangle, right, the altitude AD. So, all right, so there, there are a lot of different ways to, to solve this problem. Um, but here's, here's one way that we could do it using similar triangles. Um, we have, so here's the solution. Um, by the Pythagorean theorem, I know that BC equals, um, equals root five, right? because two squared plus one squared has to equal BC squared, right? Two squared plus one squared is five. So that's the measure of BC. Um, so now I have all the um, side lengths in, big, in the big triangle ABC, right? So now what I could do is I could leverage next the fact that um, I wanna use the similarity of ABC, where I know all the side lengths, um, and triangle A, sorry, triangle B, uh, B, A, D. All right, I'm going to use these two triangles um, and their, their similarity. And What can I say about these? Well, I can say, again, I wanna say that ratios of corresponding sides have to be equal, right? So I have a big triangle and a small triangle. So I'm gonna say AC over AD, which is what I'm looking for, the altitude, equals what? Well, uh, that equals, Um, in the small triangle, I'm going to use AB, the hypotenuse, right? And that's going to be the ratio to, um, against BC, right? BC over AB. So this is a ratio I can conclude from that similarity of triangles. Now, you, you might ask, wait, but you know, each of these triangles has three sides. How am I picking these, right? How am I picking which side goes on top, which side goes on bottom in each of these triangles? Well, here's the way I think of it, at least. And um, I think maybe people who are good at like spatial reasoning on the fly and imagining a shape sort of, what you can do is you can sort of picture the large triangle and then imagine um, reflecting it and rotating it and shrinking it a little bit um, to go from triangle ABC to triangle BAD. Um, I'm terrible at that kind of visualization. So I, I do some, if, you're, if you can imagine that, right, imagine, a, B, C, and then imagine um, mirror imaging it, rotating it, and then shrinking it to form triangle B, A, D. Then it will place the sides right on top of each other, and you'll be able to see which, which side corresponds to which. I, I do something way more like pigeon level. Um, and and uh, what I do is I essentially just say, um, I just look at what angle is each side opposite of. And then I know they're corresponding if they're opposite from the same angle. So that's because I, if I do that, I get confused less frequently. So that's uh, that's why I, I do that method. So so that's how I'm thinking of this ratio. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll kind of annotate that um, because I have two triangles, a big triangle and a little triangle. And what I'm thinking of in this ratio, um, I'm thinking of the side opposite the blue angle. right, in the big triangle. I'm thinking of that divided by um, the side opposite the blue angle. In the little triangle, right, that's how I'm 
deciding which sides to use, right? See the, see when I say side opposite the blue, here's the blue angle. So the side opposite the blue angle, that's AC, right? That's where I, where I got that from in the big triangle, right? Then we have the side opposite the blue angle in the little triangle. Well, in the little triangle, the side opposite the blue angle is AD. And that's where I got, that's where I got AD from, right? Then we have the next ratio. What's the next ratio? I have BC. Ah, what is that? That's the hypotenuse in the big triangle, which even the hypotenuse is defined by what angle it's opposite, right? Hypotenuse is the angle that's opposite from the right angle, right? So it's really the same way of thinking of it. It's just that the right angle is a little more special, a little easier to see, um, right? So that's where, that's where BC came from because it's the side opposite the, hypo, um, opposite of the right angle in the big triangle versus the um, hypotenuse in the little triangle. Right, which is in the little triangle, hypotenuse is that's it, AB. Right. So that's that's where I got that that ratio from. Once you have this ratio, now we just plug in the un, the knowns and solve for the unknown. Right. So now I can say, okay, um, right, plugging in values. What do we have? AC is one. Right. AD is unknown. BC is root five. And AB is two, right? Um, now just reciprocate both sides to solve for AD. So I get AD is two over root five, which you can leave it in that form, or you could say it's two root five over five, right? So that would be the, that would be the altitude of that triangle, right? Is, um, Two root five over five. So, so this, um, and now there, are, of course, there are many other ways to solve this problem. Um, probably area is probably the easiest, right? Just say that the area of the triangle is both one half of um, AB times AC, and it's also one half of BC times AD, right? It's probably easiest to think of in terms of area. Um, but the, um, but this, I, I, I wanted to demonstrate how you set up a proportion and how you could use a proportion based on similar triangles, especially in this, in this particular diagram that's so critical to the development of curvature. All right, um, great. Well, I hope that's uh, a helpful little primer for our, the geometry component um, that's gonna be featured so, so prominently in our Jogan's PSP, so great, thanks.